So Minute Physics made a video about Simpson's paradox, which is, well, this. When a trend appears in two or more sets of data, but when they're looked at together, the trend appears to go in a different direction. Now, this would have been all well and good, but then Minute Physics uploaded a part two to this video, where they looked at another example of Simpson's paradox. And I gotta say, there were a lot of things that I took issue with in it. But hey, not to worry, I can just leave a comment telling them what I- Oh. Comments are disabled. Because the discourse failed to remain civil. Oh, I'm sure. Well, this is what happens when you disable your comments. Imagine a future cat-topia. I hate it. Where both cats and people are applying to the physics and astronomy departments. In astronomy, two cats are accepted and two rejected, while one human is accepted and one is rejected. On the other hand, in physics, one cat gets in and two don't, while two humans get in and four don't. So overall at the university, three cats are accepted and four rejected for a 43% acceptance rate, while three humans are accepted and five rejected for a 38% acceptance rate. Is the university discriminating against humans in its application? application process? Possibly not. That's because if each department reviews its own applications, then the numbers show that the astronomy department lets in 50% of cats and 50% of humans, which seems fair, and the physics department lets in 33% of cats and 33% of humans, which again seems fair. The reason then for the apparent unfairness at the university level is the imbalance in how many cats and humans apply to each department. More of the cats applied to the astronomy department, which happened to let in a greater proportion of applicants, regardless of species, while more of the humans applied to physics, which let in a smaller proportion of applicants. This situation is another illustration of Simpson's statistical paradox, and something like it actually happened at Berkeley in the 1970s. It's always Berkeley, isn't it? which realized it was letting in 44% of men applying to the graduate school, but only 35% of women. Careful analysis was able to show that women tended to apply more to departments that had less funding and fewer places, like English, and men tended to apply more to less competitive departments like engineering. Thus, within each department, which was the level at which applications were evaluated, there wasn't obvious evidence of gender discrimination among applicants. If anything, women were favored, and yet the unequal distribution of women and men across departments resulted resulted in an unequal distribution of women and men at the university overall. You'll notice I kind of just let this video play for the most part, and that's because there's really nothing wrong with it. The video should have ended right here and it would have been all well and good. But wait, there's more. The question then is what caused the unequal distribution of women and men to begin with? No, the question was, are university admissions biased? To which you proved the answer is no. Well, actually, the answer was yes. A little bit in favor of women. You've answered the question already. What caused the unequal distribution of men and women to begin with is an entirely different question. If you want to talk about that, it should be in a different video. Although I guess that type of video wouldn't fit on a channel called Minute Physics. You'd have to do like, Minute Sociology. Actually, now that I think of it, this topic doesn't even have anything to do with physics. Simpson's paradox in general is a broad enough concept that you can apply it to pretty much any science, including physics, but you've already covered it in part one, and this video is just showing a specific example of it that doesn't have anything to do with physics. Why does this video exist? One can of course imagine a sinister institution that knows how Simpson's Paradox works and wants to discriminate against a particular group. All they have to do is advertise smaller, more competitive departments more heavily to that group, and vice versa for groups they want to promote. Oh, but you'd never believe something so absurd, would you, Henry? More realistically, certain departments or fields may have reputations for being unwelcoming and unsupportive towards women, even if they let them in fairly. So you're telling me that these institutions are not discriminating against women at all, and are in fact just a little bit more inviting to women than they are to men. Women would face no barriers getting into them, but people believe that they are discriminating against women, and that's actually what's holding women back? Fascinating. Just fascinating. And who is it? Who's going around telling women that the world has it out for them and that they're being discriminated against? Who could possibly be doing that? You know, it's, it's on the tip of my tongue. Might be someone that rhymes with schmeminists. And it's also possible that other aspects of a university itself attract applicants who are more likely to follow gendered career stereotypes. Imagine not going to a school that would lead you to your dream job because it has a football team. But ultimately, as the Berkeley study concluded, the problem is a bigger, societal one. The Berkeley study provided no evidence to prove that the problem is a bigger, societal one. Or at least, no evidence that you've shown in this video. 
The Berkeley study just showed that the problem wasn't discrimination in the application process, not that it was a problem with society. And what is with that thought bubble? Even if you were right, and this proved that there was some problem with how society views men and women, all that would mean is that we think men and women are suited for different things. Not that men are better than women, or that women are better than men. You jump to a conclusion, then you jumped from that conclusion to another conclusion. The absence of a demonstrable bias in the admissions system does not give grounds for concluding that there must be no bias anywhere else in the educational process. You're right on that one. You absolutely are. Just because there isn't any bias in admissions doesn't mean there aren't any biases anywhere else. But that statement is true the other way around as well. Just because there could be biases somewhere else doesn't mean that there are. You're telling us not to jump to an extreme conclusion, but you're jumping to the opposite extreme. Women are shunted towards fields of study that are generally more crowded, less productive of completed degrees, less well-funded, and that frequently offer poorer professional employment prospects. Remember earlier on when you said, One can of course imagine a sinister institution that knows how Simpson's paradox works and wants to discriminate against a particular group. All they have to do is advertise smaller, more competitive departments more heavily to that group, and vice versa for groups they want to promote. Well, it looks like that's what you're imagining here right now. Those words were written in a statistics paper in 1975, and more recent statistics tell us that they still remain true today. So despite 40 years of societal change, men and women continue to follow the same trends? That would sort of suggest that society isn't what's causing this, wouldn't it? Which is unfortunate if you think women and men should have equal opportunities and or be paid equally for equal work. What are you- This has nothing to do with equal pay for equal work. This has nothing to do with any pay for any work. This isn't work, this is school. Even if what you say is true, and men and women are being forced by society to apply for different jobs, that still wouldn't be an issue of equal pay for equal work, because they wouldn't be equal work, because men and women would have different jobs. And as for e equal opportunities, they have equal opportunities. Women actually have just a sprinkle more opportunity, since whichever field they apply to will actually be just a little bit more likely to accept them. They don't have less opportunities, men and women just take those opportunities at different rates. So the paradox isn't really in the statistics. No, it is. It's still Simpson's paradox, it's the same situation you described in the last video. The data appeared to show bias against women in university admissions when there actually was none. That's a paradox. That's Simpson's paradox. Since, after careful analysis, the statistics tell us we're biased. The statistics absolutely do not tell us that. You extrapolated that. And even hint at where those biases are or aren't coming into play. Bias comes into play long before the admissions process. That may be true, but the statistics don't show that. The statistics only measure the results of the admissions process. They said nothing about before or after the admissions process. No, the paradox is that we've remained so reluctant to fight our biases, even when they're put in plain sight. Even if what you say is true, that's not what a paradox is. Jesus Christ, I don't understand how you can get that first step so right. Especially when getting it right goes against your narrative. Like, you would have been better off just looking at the initial data and saying, Oh, look at that, women are being admitted less than men. This means there's discrimination against women. But you didn't. You actually looked at it critically and sought out the truth. You did a really good job of looking at things fairly. And then at every step after that, you fuck it up. It is beautiful how wrong this video is.